Over the years, a number of people have mentioned to me that there aren't any good 3D tutorials for Game Major Studio 2. And even if you don't count the one that I made back in 2016, back when the Game Maker Studio 2 beta first came out, that actually surprises me a little. Why that might be? Whatever the reason, I figured I might as well just jump on the opportunity to go and, um, make a better version of the first video that I made. I put that thing out like three days after the GMS2 beta first came out, and it was at least partially kind of an apology for the, uh, the 3D is dead video that I made as a joke and people took more seriously than I expected. That's just a little bit of fun backstory on that video. So if you've never worked with 3D and Game Maker before, there are a few things I want to get squared away. One is that this is one of the most advanced things that you can do with Game Maker Studio. There are no two ways about that. If you aren't comfortable programming with Game Maker ordinarily, or at the very least using other programming languages and game engines, I highly, highly, highly recommend you get comfortable with the inner workings of Game Maker before that. The first video isn't so bad. In this video, I'm going to be doing what you see on the screen right here. I'm just going to be setting up the uh, I'm just going to be setting up the 3D projection. But once you start trying to do anything remotely advanced, the difficulty curve ramps up very fast, and it will do you well to understand things like how the graphic pipes line work and what a matrix is and what a vector is. If and when those kind of vocabulary words come up, I'll do my best to explain them but it will be very helpful if those are things that you've already got a, uh, got a grasp of. Secondly, if you have actually watched the first video that I made on 3D and Game Maker Studio 2, everything in that video is still valid. It's just that there are easier ways to do a number of the things in there. At the time when this first came out, pretty much everyone thought that uh, you had to make heavy use of the camera system. And fortunately, it turns out that that is not the case because that cuts down on a lot of the work that you have to do. So I have here a Game Maker project with the default room, the same old grass sprite that I've been using since basically the beginning of my Game Maker tutorials back in 2014, 2013, I'm sorry. Um, I have a tile set to go with that grass tile. I have a room, which has Game Maker, why do you insist on opening up this side panel of the room editor all the way every time I, every time I first open you? Uh, the room has a tile layer. Why is it tiles underscore one? The room has a tile layer. The tile layer is filled with the grass tiles. Uh, there's no shenanigans going on here with anything at all, I swear. There is an instance layer with nothing on it because I haven't created any objects yet. Uh, if you go down to the viewports and cameras section down at the bottom, and it baffles me to this day why this is why the why this section is to so tiny compared to all the other stuff in, in the Game Maker IDE, but um, I have everything turned off. I am not using viewports or cameras or anything right now. You can if you want to. If you want to do split screen or anything of that nature, you would want to use viewports and cameras. I am not going to be doing anything with split screen, at least not right now, so that's going to stay out of sight and out of mind. Firstly, I'm going to create an object. I'm going to call it camera. I have pretty much always named my Game Maker objects with a capital letter and Pascal case. That's because I come from a programming background of languages like Java and C Sharp, which, ha which typically do that for objects. If you're coming from Game Maker land, obj underscore camera is fine. I just think that looks extremely weird every time I see it. So if I can spell, I have no idea what you're talking about, Gamer, Game Maker, but if I can, if I can spell that right, uh, it's just going to be camera with a capital C. Setting things up, I'm going to add a draw event and I'm going to maximize this code window because it's the only code window I'm going to be using in this, uh, in this entire video. So there are three lines of code that you'll need, four lines of code that you'll need. The first one, camera is camera get active. So the camera system will be in use. You just don't need to do anything complicated with it. Cameras are essentially a new type of data structure. They contain information on what you see on the screen. This line of code here, camera get active, that does exactly what you think it does. It just fetches the index of the camera that's currently rendering stuff to the screen. Hey. There are a few other ways you can do that. You can say view, view. You can say view get camera. You can use that function. You can say camera create in the create event somewhere and use that camera. For the purposes of this video, camera get active is fine. If you want a little more control over how you're using cameras, you might want to use one of the other functions. 
Second line of code. Camera set view map. Or view matrix, if you like to pronounce your words um, fully. So this is a function that's going to take two objects, two objects, two, two uh, parameters. One is the camera that we obtained in this line up here. The second is the view matrix. So cameras have two main parts. Cameras have the view matrix and the projection matrix. You can think of the camera in a game as the little Lakitu from Super Mario 64 who floats around behind Mario's head holding a literal camcorder. And to use that metaphor, the view matrix would be where the camera is in physical space. And the projection matrix would be some information about like the camera's size and lens and field of view and that sort of thing. Let's deal with the view matrix first. So to create one of these, my typing skills are getting gradually worse and worse the longer I use computers. But you can say matrix build look at, and you can see at the bottom that it takes nine arguments. If you've ever used 3D in Game Maker Studio 1 or earlier versions, that should look familiar. The first couple of variables, the first three arguments that it takes, is going to be x from, y from, and z from. That is the position of the camera in space. This is going to be where Lockheed's position in the world is. When I'm first setting up a 3D projection in Game Maker or anything else, I was messing with libgdx a while ago and I did basically the same thing. I like to have the camera pointing from one corner of the map to the other, looking slightly down, and I find that that is a good way to make sure that um, the 3D is working and that it's doing more or less what I expect it to. So I'm going to start. Locky2 is going to be standing in the upper left corner, and it's going to be floating some distance above the ground. Let's say 100. The next three arguments, x2, y2, and z2, this is where the camera is looking. This would be uh, Super Mario's position in the world, or at least the back of his head, because I believe that's where the, camper, the camera in, in those games tries to, uh, to focus itself. So this, as I said, is going to be the opposite corner of the room. Room width, room height, that's going to be the bottom right corner, and zero, so it's going to be pointing uh, down at the ground from a little bit above the ground. The next three arguments, x up, y up, and z up. These are not super important. This is called the up vector of the camera. I'll try and put a little diagram on screen of what an up vector is. In almost all cases in Game Maker, it's going to be 0, 0, 1, or in some rare cases, 0, negative 1, 0. If you imagined holding a camcorder and sticking a rod out of the top of it, the rod would be the up vector of the camera. This depends on your coordinate system. I usually use the positive z axis as the up direction. Um, so I will be using 0, 0, positive 1 as my up vector. Some game engines like Unity and I believe Unreal and also uh, the Blender 3D modeling program. Uh, some other tools like to use the positive y axis in the up vector, in which case it would be 0, positive 1, 0. If you're not sure what to do with this, just leave it at 0, 0, positive 1 and um, you can mess with it later if you want to. Pretty much the only reason you would change this is if you wanted to have the camera roll or something. Which I'm not especially interested in doing right now. That's a telephone. Okay, legitimate question. What year was it the last time I got through an entire Game Maker tutorial without having the telephone ring on me? Okay. Where was I? The third line of code. Camera set projmat. This is the projection matrix. Again. Two arguments, if you wanted to use the locky 2 metaphor, uh, this is the physical specs of the camera it's holding. I have to imagine that this isn't the metaphor that Nintendo was going for when they decided to use locky 2 in, as the camera in that game. I believe that was just so that they could introduce players to the concept of moving the camera around in 3D space because that was a new thing back in the 90s. Hey. But all the same, it's really good when it comes to explaining these things, these concepts. So, to create a projection matrix, You have a few options. Matrix build projection ortho. That's not what we're dealing with right now. Orthographic projections are, to make a long story short, the uh, the usual 2D projection that you would see in a Game Maker game. You have matrix build projection perspective, which is fine. You also have matrix build projection perspective field of view, which is what I'm going to be using right now. Again, if you look at the arguments down at the bottom of, uh, of the code window in the code help section, 
This should look very familiar to those of you who use Game Maker Studio One 3D. Game Maker Studio One basically took these two functions and combined them into one. Game Maker Studio Two has separated them into the view and projection matrix, which means you have to do slightly more typing, but they're a little bit more flexible in what they can do. And also it just removes a step of abstraction. Whether or not you like that is a matter of your opinion. So the arguments are going to be the, to be the field of view in the, uh, the y direction. I'm going to go with, uh, I think in my original tutorial I had it 45, but honestly, a field of view closer to 60, I think makes more people comfortable. An aspect ratio, which is, oh, four to three, 16 by nine, uh, aspect ratios, you are probably familiar with those from video and TV screens and stuff. You can literally say 4 over 3, or if you want to um, have it more accurate to the size of the game window, you can say window get width over window get height. Z near, I'm going to leave at 1 for now, and Z far, I'm going to leave at 32. These are the clipping planes. Anything closer to the camera than Z near will not be drawn. If you make Z near zero, then unexpected things might happen. One is usually fine. Anything farther away from the camera than Z far will also not be drawn. You can make this as big as you want. If you want to enable stuff really far away from the camera to be drawn, you can just add on a couple zeros. There's not really a point to doing that. 32,000, give or take, should be fine. If you set Z far to be shorter than Z near, I've never experimented to find out what happens, but I can't imagine it's anything very useful. I made a video on matrices in use for 3D transformations a little while ago. If you are curious about those, I'll have links around. The camera related matrices are slightly different. That's a story for another video. For now, all you really need to know is that you can compose them by using the various matrix functions like matrix build, projection, perspective, and so on and so forth. And the last line of code, I promised you four lines of code, and I really only gave you two because the first and last one are, are really set up. Uh, camera apply. That's just going to take the matrices that you fed into the camera as, as, a, as their render settings and making it take effect the next time anything is drawn. So I'm going to go back to the room, and do I have a camera added to the room? I do not. Let's just drag the camera into the room. That's beneath the tile layer. I don't believe that's going to matter. Uh, we are, for the most part, taking control over things like depth ourselves. That's upside down. Alright, you know what? Depth in Game Maker is weird. That is a law of the universe. You can probably find it in the Bible somewhere. If you're using things like layers for tiles and objects when you're using 3D in Game Maker, uh, this becomes important. It's one of several reasons why I prefer not to deal with layers and tiles and objects in 3D and Game Maker and use my own systems. Um, instead of fighting with it, I'm going to go back on what I said five minutes ago and make the up vector 0, 0, negative 1 and essentially flip the camera upside down instead of, uh, instead of fighting with Game Maker over what the up vector is. So now you see uh, we have the camera. And um, it's floating somewhat above the ground, slightly above the ground, not too far above the ground. If you wanted to make it float farther above the ground, uh, you could increase this value, the Z from value, and that will make it higher above the ground. And it's going to look down across the room. That's a little better uh, in terms of seeing what's going on. It's going to look down across the room at the opposite corner. You may notice this is mirrored. It looks like we're in the bottom left of the room, looking across to the top right instead of the other way around, top left to bottom right, like I had said at the beginning. Again, I'm not a huge fan of trying to use Game Maker 3D with the room editor because it has a habit of liking to invert the camera on you in this manner. If you don't mind working like this, you can use the room editor like this. Um, the layer depth is essentially the Z value in that case. As I said a minute ago, I believe I said this a minute ago, I'm usually a fan of um, not forcing Game Maker to uh, play nicely with my 3D cameras and just doing things myself. I'll be talking about a lot of this in the future. People have asked me to explain some of the uh, some of the things that I've been working on. And there's like eight future video topics in there. That's it for this video. I finished what I said I would get done at the beginning. There is a 3D projection and it's looking diagonally across the room. Uh, there are quite a number of things you might also want to set up that are usually done right in the beginning that I 
have chosen not to talk about here. Uh, we have the Z buffer. If you try to draw anything in a 3D world besides just a flat plane of tiles, and you don't have the Z buffer turned on, you are going to have an interesting time. But I want to dedicate an entire video to that. Uh, we have backface calling. GPU set call mode. By default, it's turned off. Computers like to only draw the outward facing side of, um, of polygons as an optimization, so they're not doing extra work for something that the, uh, the player won't even be able to see. You have control over how that works with GPU set call mode. You can turn that on or off. I'll be discussing that in the future. Although that itself isn't the most, uh, the most advanced topic ever. Um, there are other GPU functions. I've already made videos on lighting and fog. And those videos are fairly straightforward. There are a whole host of shader related functions. I really want to talk about shaders at some point. I've done very little of that on my YouTube channel. They're very exciting. Although there are a few things I should probably talk about first between then and now. If you do anything with 3D, you're probably going to be working with shaders a fair amount. And then of course, there are the vertex buffers and vertex formats. And I'm going to be, this is going to get priority. I made a video on these a long time ago uh, when I did my er initial Game Maker Studio 2 3D videos. I want to give them more attention because back then I didn't really spend all that much time explaining exactly what things like a vertex format is. And um, they're another one that you can do some extremely interesting things with if you wanted to. That's it. This is basic 3D setup in Game Maker Studio 2. I hope that was easier to follow than the first video that I made. It's four lines of code. The training wheels are going to come off soon. If you want this project, um, same thing as the last couple of videos that I've made. I'm going to have a link to the GitHub repository, which I haven't exactly been committing to frequently in the, in the description of this video. Let's commit to master. If you're feeling generous and you found that helpful, I have not gone and set up a Patreon, but I do have a donation link down below. My name is Dragonite, and I will see you all later.